I'm sure a lot of you are waiting for Grand Admiral Thrawn's return as a Lego minifigure. It's just a shame the set is lame. Somewhat like his appearance in live-action Disney Star Wars. At least there is consistency. In today's video, let's talk about this upcoming set. There's not much to talk about, except those figures. Hello everyone, and welcome to Second Break to the Left. Here we talk about Lego set news, reviews, and tips. Before we dive in, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. This new set named Ahsoka Tano's Jewel on Peridia will be released on the 1st of August 2024. It has an item number of 75385 and has 382 pieces. It features the fight scene from the final episode of the Ahsoka Disney Plus show. It comes with a buildable platform and five minifigures. The platform has four black pillars and features turntables to enable you to recreate the battle. There's also a feature to recreate Ezra's jump. I've spotted a huge problem already. Blech, stickers! Lots of stickers. Okay, so no one was really going to buy this for the platform with the pillars, right? The core draw for this set is most certainly the minifigures. Let's take a look at each one. I know Grandad Thrawn is a fan fave, so let's start with him. We have only ever seen Thrawn as a minifigure once before back in 2017. The latest version features black hair, which I think reflects the character better than the blue version. His torso is very similar to the 2017 version, but... Oh Lego, you didn't. Aw, oh, he's dad bod thrown. I like the attention to detail. He's also wearing black boots. He's a really good minifigure. Simple, but really effective. I know people are going to be getting this set just for him. Next is Ahsoka. We've seen Ahsoka several times in Lego before, but this time we're seeing Ahsoka the White. She's got an updated headpiece that has a new headband design on it. Her torso has a similar design to the 2023 version, with some small updates particularly on her belt and a lighter colour scheme. Her legs are also changed to reflect her white outfit. She also has white and silver printing on her arms. Her outfit has a lot of detail on it. I love it. She also comes with her dual white lightsabers. On to Ezra Bridger. Ezra is another minifigure we've not seen since 2017. Here we're getting an older and more rugged Ezra. I like. He's got scratches printed on his face, which are a nice and accurate touch. He's got torso and leg printing, which shows tattered robes. They look pretty good. He also comes with a lightsaber. Next is Morgan Elsbeth. Well, she's certainly not the worst space witch we've ever seen in Star Wars. We saw her first back in 2023 in the New Republic E-Wing vs Shin Haiti Starfighter set. Here we're seeing Morgan Elsbeth with an updated face print, and this time around she's got legs instead of a skirt. Much easier to fight in. Although it looked like she was wearing more of a Hakama inspired outfit in the show. She comes with the Blade of Towels in, which looks like a green version of the Darksaber from the Mandalorian sets. I did enjoy her as a character, and I think she's a great addition to this set. And finally, there's a night trooper, or as I like to call them, zombie trooper. The trooper is covered in red banding and golden cracks. While this does look great, I wouldn't have minded seeing some of this printing on the arms too. Brick Fanatics has this set in hand and have revealed the minifigure head underneath the helmet. Please check out their website and give them some love for this reveal. The minifigure head is a nice touch to this figure. Overall, the set of figures is great. We could be picky and cry out that there's no Captain Enoch, 
but I personally wouldn't want to swap out any of the other figures for him. There's an argument that Sabine should be here since she was part of the fight, but I'm not at all upset about it. I couldn't stand her in that show and I'm going to choose to believe this set is from an alternative universe where the lightsaber stab actually killed her in the first episode. Of course, if she had died, she wouldn't have given the bad guys the magical ball which resulted in them finding Thrawn and then we could still believe that he was an intelligent and well-written villain. On to the price. In the UK, it'll cost way more than it should. Oops, sorry. It'll cost £49.99. In the US, it'll be $54.99. And in parts of Europe, it'll be €54.99. I don't think this set is anywhere near worth that. This set is five minifigures, a lacklustre scenery build, and a bunch of stickers. We could compare this to the set that was released earlier this year, bought in the Tanta V4, which has a similar price, comes with seven minifigures, including a 25th anniversary one, and has 502 pieces. It also has movable parts, and while there are stickers, the set doesn't rely on them and would look good without them. We could even compare the Jewel on Pridia to the upcoming Star Wars Advent Calendar, which also has five minifigures. It also has 368 pieces. Although these pieces are smaller, the price is a lot lower too. This feels like a cash grab. People are going to want Grand Admiral Thrawn, so I don't doubt this set will sell. The other figures are great too. I'm probably going to get this for the minifigures, but I'm not going to be happy about it. Luckily, this isn't going to be a Lego store exclusive, so I'll be waiting for another toy retailer to sell this cheaper. Putting the cost aside, it's actually not a terrible set. The minifigures are brilliant and the printing on them looks fantastic. The platform looks fun, but it's nothing very special, especially with all those stickers on it. I would have preferred this set to just be a minifigure battle pack, or give us Thrawn in a UCS Chimera set. Well, those are my thoughts. What do you think of Ahsoka Tano's Jewel on Peridia? Let me know in the comments. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Lego content. Enjoy the rest of your day.